Something's nearby. Where is it? What in the... There's a ship here. Incredible. Beautiful too. Wards, you're on your own.
Wards. I'm going to need a hand here. A ward restrains me. Wards, you're on your own. Wards. I'm going to need a hand here. Take care. The place is warded. Sorry, not this time. I feel something close. I am warded. I cannot. Sorry, not this time. The ward's power is gone. Something's concealed. Ready to walk through it if you are. Unveil yourself. Messed this up, didn't I? Spirit and flesh, I summon you! That's not the ritual I'd have used. Through a single point passes an infinity of paths. I felt this one all right.
Whatever grip it is the nightmare has here, you'd never know by looking. Is it just me or...? I felt it too. I feel a draft. From the invisible. Bridges up. Wonder why. To keep folk in or to keep something out? Is that? Yes. Something's here. Is it just me or...? I felt it too.
What a name. I like it. It's very unusual. There is a path, once I clear the way. So impressive. A fishing boat, eh? Because that's more plausible than a galleon. Adventure? Sounds fun. You're such a little boy sometimes. This ivy is strong, really strong. You don't say. Corpses. We could manifest what hides here. Present yourself. Still confusing your chance? I raise for now the Veil of Shadows. Did I just do the wrong ritual?
Can you find a way around the locked door? The village is full of ghost wards. They're afraid of something. Leave them up. Cause no trouble. Did you feel that? It's close. Too heavy to lower from your side.
Who there? Anyone home? Where did they go? Perhaps there's a key. Fairfax Haskell, though it bring demons down in great wrath upon my soul, to pray. For those that from their foggy fury they be freed to return in glory to their faith. I, Fairfax Haskell, friends, find fortitude in our success. Exiled from our homes by the devil's machinations, we congregate before the Lord in this new meeting house. We gather, we worship, we overcome, and we shall be well protected by the holy ward my son now makes under my instruction. 
For I have spent hours countless in your service, poring through books and papers, devouring the oeuvre of my peers, that our meeting house be safe. Fairfax Haskell, for whom the word pompous was invented. Half built? Yes. Open to the four winds? Yes. But already it is resplendent with our faith. A shining reminder of our renewed belief in better days. McCraith, Mr. McCraith. <laughs> I thought you. I thought you. What happy portent. What most excellent news. What blessings. I applaud your valorous deeds. O oh, fate, I say, dead, sir. I thought you dead. Maybe I am. Do not make light of such matters, my friend, for the devil's wrath is wide awake, and his claw scratches at our door, metaphorically speaking. I'm alive. I promise. My friends, I shall deliver this sermon another time. The battle with the Devil's Legions is ongoing, and Mr. McCraith and I have much to discuss. Thank you, Lammy. Behold this miracle of ours, Mr. McCraith. Exiled we, yet in our darkest hour, we find the moral vigor to build this humble monument to resilience. But you and I must speak of darker matters. For we, erudite men of higher learning, know that evil yet walks. There is much work to be done. Indeed there is. Yes, yes. Forgive the inelegance of my welcome. You are alone. Do I surmise that Miss Duarte is no more? It should have been me. The Lord is near unto them that are of a contrite heart, and will save such as be afflicted in spirit. I'm so sorry for your loss. Grief is a journey, long and painful, but you do not walk the road alone, I promise you. And there comes a time when you must let go and walk on alone. In time, God healed my wounds. May you two find peace. Now, I regret that even at this most burdensome time for you, I must move with haste to business and beg once more for your help. What's going on? It must be serious if you're asking for my help. Since your defeat at the meeting house, the devil, heartened and emboldened, goes from strength to strength. He insinuates himself among my people, reveling in the suffering of the disease he unleashes upon us. It pits one against the other. Suspicion tears this community apart once again. All this to weaken my people and lead them away from the light of God. In times of disease, you need doctors. And I'm no doctor. We'll not treat the symptoms, we'll tear out the root. An agent of the devil walks among us. A witch? You must find her. Or him, as it may be. You and I share great expertise. But I am a man of position. Well, you, sir, are much more familiar with field work. Go, meet my people. Walk amongst them. Learn which of them secretly serves the demon, that we may expunge this evil malady from our body politic. What makes you think there is a witch at work here? Aye, sir, I'm a man of God and intellect. I can read the signs. 
When a so-called mystery disease afflicts half of my people overnight, there can be only one culprit. It is the devil's doing, sir. Probably through one of his servants. For you see, I understood immediately that the water in the well had been tainted. There are no strangers here. You could self-accept it. No one has fled. The guilty woman, or man, I suppose, remains within the village. As evil walks, the evil are emboldened, but this witch shall see her downfall. Or his, of course, as did the last one, as will the next. Some years ago, you may have heard tell of this, I made my name on the execution of a terrible witch. It pains me that I must do it once more. A man in your position must know what goes on in his own community. Why, of course, I know all that there is to know. Or near enough. Ask your questions, sir. Ask away. Your son. How would you describe him? Lamentation. How would I describe him? I... Well, he's curious. Inquisitive, I mean, as opposed to peculiar. Although he has his moments there, too. I tried to teach him demonology, to make him the third generation of witch hunters. Ah, but he revealed no disposition. Occult knowledge could only obfuscate his good nature. At heart, he is a naive boy who reads a lot and doesn't say much. How did you a man of position and faith, become a, a demonologist. Ah, yes. If you'll indulge me for a moment, I shall explain, in the briefest manner possible. Though blessed with intellect and no little faith, I also had privilege. I had the means for an education, time and place with which to study. For a time, my father was a pupil of Henry Boggart, the great demonologist. He had the books. I had the aptitude. When he passed, I donned his mantle. My father taught me about duty. I have gifts, faith, intellect, position. I must protect them. I must use them to protect my people. This is my duty. This is my burden. How goes the colony? Sir, the body politic bears a heavy weight. Not content with weakening their flesh, the devil's evil attacks the people's hearts and minds. Until you expose the culprit, the harmony of this divinely beautiful commonwealth shall remain marred by suspicion and mistrust. Long story shortened, people are not getting along. I noted your ghost wards, with some interest. Ghost wards, an interesting name. I call them sanctifiers, a name more palatable to my flock. Why did you not use them in New Eden when the curse began? It was more complicated to convince the whole congregation of the necessity to use magic. Here, people have more trust in my unmovable probity. This requires a great deal of occult knowledge. Where did you learn your craft? Etienne Roulet, one of the greatest demonologists of our time, is a good friend of mine. I improved upon his work. This illness, tell me of it. Upon my arrival here in the Harrows, I immediately set about protecting the place with consecrated tokens. 
Safeguarded from the curse, we all felt safer for a time. Then some devil poisoned the well. Our only source of water. Someone on the inside, mind. Spoiled water proves nothing. A wise point and well made, Banisher, if not for the fact that we have been, for months on end, under the obvious influence of a terrible curse. One way or another, the devil has found an agent among us. And who knows what nefarious ill doing old Black Spy plans next. I am no witch hunter. My business is with the lingering dead. For a fee, yes, I know. But you can't deny evil practitioners exist. A few years ago, I had to cleanse this community from such a threat. Why would she curse your colony? Why would anyone choose to separate from God's flock? I'm afraid some just want to see the world burn, Mr. McCraith. By the grace and charity of the good Lord, she was exposed. It was my honor to serve him in sending her to hell where she belonged. Her mask was a good one, as if butter would not melt upon her tongue. But you cannot fool a man of faith and intellect. No, sir, you cannot. You'll not mind me saying it, but for a Puritan paradise, you seem to get more than your fair share of witches. God has not forsaken us. But someone here does the devil's work. Find me a witch, Mr. McCraith. Return this place to the Lord. I'm a working man, Governor. But the Lord does seem happy to pay, so I'll do what I can. I'll take my leave of you, Governor. Of course. Outside, you must take the stairs. While you're with us, the first house on the left shall be your home. Another witch hunt. That just tells me he's hiding something. Mind you, I'd like to know what's causing the sickness. I'm glad you're here too. Ghost Ward. I think you can safely knock it over. I can't worry. 